I'm Monica, and I'm 16 years old. How well do you know the ones you live under the same roof with? Do you know what your relatives love? When do they come back from work? What food do they prefer? Most importantly, what are they doing while you are sleeping? I trusted relatives so much that I had to pay for it with my health and happiness. Now I'm ashamed to tell this story, but I hope I will get some good advice and support here. I grew up with my father. I barely remember my mom. She died when I was around four. Sometimes her shaking hands and her look of being lost come to my mind. I have one really vivid memory of my mom. One day, she got hysterical and just attacked my father's collection of dolls and began to tear off their legs and heads. Oh, she scared me and my dad then. It was probably because of her illness, which I inherited as well. Thankfully, I take medications, and I don't have any bouts. I only sometimes get dizzy. Yeah, yeah, my father has a large collection of dolls. He has hundreds, maybe even thousands of them. You think I'm lucky? That I had many toys when I was a child? Sure. He didn't let me take a step towards his treasure. Sometimes it seemed to me that he loved the dolls more than me. But I understood that it was just jealousy. He is a great person and father. He spent a lot of money on my treatment. Also, he cooked really well. Three times a week, he organized a fantastic dinner for us with crispy homemade chicken, pizza, and burgers. He even baked cakes for me. What other father can boast of such culinary feats? But are there really perfect fathers? Of course, he had his own flaws. My father never gave me pocket money and bought me clothes extremely rarely. My wardrobe hadn't been upgraded in years. I wore shabby pants, short shirts, and stretched sweaters. Sometimes I had to wear my mom's old-fashioned clothes, which were obviously not my size. I dressed so ridiculously. If at the end of school it was possible to get the school's biggest laughing stock, then I would definitely have won. I looked enviously at the clothes of my classmates, which looked so new. When I was in primary school, I even stole my classmate's jacket. It was so sparkling and stylish that I couldn't resist. Obviously, the next day, I had to listen to my father's speech about morality, apologize to the owner, and return the magnificent thing. My classmates still remember this story and try to avoid me. I just hear their jokes that now I'm stealing clothes from the homeless. Very funny. Well, anyway, because of my father's greed, I don't have a single friend and a very dubious reputation at school. Sometimes I felt offended by my dad. How could he spend so much money on his dolls, but not buy his only daughter some beautiful clothes? What was lacking in me? Is my hair too natural? Do I talk a lot? Oh man, I was so annoyed by these toys. All these damn dolls were everywhere. Some rooms were just filled with them. Sometimes I even woke up with doll hair in my mouth or colorful ribbons in my bed. How stupid I was then. If I only knew what my father was doing to me, I wouldn't envy the dolls. Sometimes we don't see the full picture of the world. Either we look at everything in pink glasses or vice versa, we gloss. The most important thing is to stop in time and take a sober look at things. That's what I didn't know how. But one thing I knew for sure, I could live a completely different life, not be such a strange hobby in my father's life. I tried not to think about them tried not to cry when he bought some wig or dress at the auction. I was too shy to ask him for a new jacket or t-shirt. Also, I was constantly at home. No movies, no cafes, no parties. For every request to have a bit of money, I got one answer. Monica, you're sick. At any moment, you can lose consciousness. Normal teenage life is not for you. It was hard to hear, but I knew he was right. I sometimes felt so weak and dizzy. It was like the earth was going under. The whole world was spinning like a rabid merry-go-round, and the mouth was dry. Most of the time, it happened after eating. I probably shouldn't have overeat. 
I quickly fell asleep and woke up in the morning, usually broken and hated the world. My dad always said it was normal, and so was with my mom. Therefore, I had to stay at home more. But damn, how much I wanted to spend more time with my peers, if I only knew what was really hiding behind my bad feeling. Despite his flaws, I loved my father. I had no one closer to me. Well, unless Aunt Lily, my father's sister. They had a strained relationship. She only spoke with me and often asked me to move to her to another state. But how could I leave my father who cooked such amazing meals and took care of me? No way in hell. That's what I thought, until one story happened that turned my life upside down. Six months ago, my father and I were talking on the phone. When we said bye, he forgot to hang up his phone, and I heard something shocking. My dad was whispering under his nose his plans for the day. So, buy a chicken, spices, fix a car, and pop into the drugstore for Monica's tranquilizers. I shuddered. What tranquilizers? I suddenly realized I had never seen the packets of my meds. My father simply gave me some pills with my dinner. And my plan had ripened. I had to check out. Was my father lying to me? Or did I just think he said something about tranquilizers? Maybe it was a glitch in the phone network. Deep down, I knew. It was not interference on the line or in my ears. I'm sick, of course, but my hearing is excellent. My dad was up to something and I had to do an investigative experiment, although I really wanted it to be a fantasy or a nightmare that would be over soon. And this is what I did. When I came home, I pretended not to have heard anything. During dinner, I laughed at Dad's jokes, talked about my school. I even imitated chewing chicken and drinking up the pills from my illness with water. It seemed my father didn't suspect anything. After our dinner, I went to my room and pretended to be asleep. Half an hour later, my father came into my room. I felt his fingers on my body. He started to powder my cheeks, put lipstick on my lips, and dye my eyes. I was laying in my nightgown and shaking with terror. He suddenly lifted my head and threw some fabric over it. I wanted to scream and cry, but I barely held myself. I expected the worst, but felt him putting a dress on me? My body was itchy from the chiffon, but with a lot of willpower, I continued pretending to be asleep. I decided to keep watching, but rather to experience the performance until the end. My dad started putting ribbons in my hair, saying some stupid dialogue about the weather and doll life. Then he put hot tea to my lips and spread cream cake over my face. He whispered into my ear so softly like never before. Why are you so messy? I'll wipe it off with a napkin. Jesus, what an absurdity. Was it a dream? Our tea party lasted around two hours. At the end, he washed me, took off the dress, and left the room. I couldn't shut my eyes until the morning and was totally horrified. The man with whom I lived in the same house and called my father is crazy. I wasn't a daughter to him, but a human-like doll in his collection, which he stuffed with tranquilizers. So that's where my headaches came from. Obviously not from epilepsy. What if I'm not sick at all? I couldn't remain in this doll theater any longer, where it seems I was playing the main role. That morning, my father went to work, and I called my aunt and said I want to come to her. She sent me money, and I got on a bus. The whole way, I thought of what I would tell her. Would she believe me, or just call the paramedics that will take me to a madhouse? Hi, is this the psychiatric hospital? We have a patient here who claims she turns into a doll at night. Luckily, when we met, she surprised me with the question. He did it with you too, Monica? I nodded, and she hugged me. That evening, we had an honest conversation. Lily told me that they were really poor in their childhood. Their parents barely managed to afford food, and couldn't buy them toys. All my father had were their grandmother's old dolls. He constantly played with them and got really attached to them. When the family got the opportunity to buy him cars and planes, he didn't even touch them. At the age of 14, he continued having tea parties with his plastic friends, and it was really scary for their parents. Lily claims she also found ribbons in her bed. 
Probably he bullied my poor mother too. Back then, they all understood that he had some problems, but no one could do anything about it. Dolls were forcibly taken, hidden, thrown away, burned, but he found new ones and played with them until nobody saw. He's been doing this for 48 years. I'm living with my aunt now. I can't forgive my father, but I miss him very much. Sometimes I think maybe I should visit him. Maybe we should talk, find him a great therapist who would solve the problem. After all, he hasn't done anything bad. He just gave me tea. On the other hand, he invented a fake disease for me and fed me tranquilizers. Would a loving father be capable of doing such a thing? He called and texted me a couple times, but I didn't answer. Then dad talked to my aunt on the phone, but Aunt Lily told him harshly that I would live with her now and that his disgusting secret had been revealed. I don't know what he said to her, but my father never insisted on me coming back. I think he lives in his own little world with his dolls, and he's very happy. Or maybe he's not. Maybe it's hard, but he's afraid to tell me he misses me. Or is he ashamed? But the father is my dearest man, right? I can't leave him alone with this problem. Or can I? What would you do in my place? Do your relatives have some peculiarities? How do you live with them? Please, give me your advice. You can write it in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to hear more stories.